Imagine traveling in a remote part of the world. And what vehicle comes to mind? That's right, the one in the old jungle movies. Crossing the desert, carrying hardy souls across uncharted territory. The Land Rover, rugged and dependable, the authentic 4x4, built for adventure. And you've just acquired the genuine article, the newest generation Land Rover, Discovery Series 2, with a lineage of all those unbeatable 4x4s. For over half a century now, Land Rover has been dedicated to manufacturing only 4x4s. Vehicles sold in over 100 countries, providing the freedom to explore. Come along on the La Ruta Maya expedition in Central America, inspecting lost cities of the ancient Maya. Or explore Mongolia, with the last horse-based culture in the world and dinosaur fossils in the Gobi Desert. Driving in such adverse conditions requires a thorough understanding of the vehicle. In fact, it's a good idea to know all about your vehicle, no matter where you choose to drive. I'm Sally Eastwood from Land Rover North America. We want you to thoroughly enjoy your new Discovery Series 2. And the best way to start is by reading your owner's manual. It's still the most comprehensive guide to understanding all of the systems and functions of your new vehicle. But sometimes it's helpful to learn by watching. And so we're going to demonstrate how to operate some of the systems of your Discovery Series 2. But this is not a substitute for reading the manual, and many times you'll be reminded to consult it for a more thorough explanation. We've designed this video to be watched from beginning to end, or, if you're looking for specific information, a chapter at a time. All the chapters are listed on the back of the video sleeve. They cover getting comfortable, safety and security, instruments and controls, the in-car entertainment system, the climate control system, stowing and towing, design hallmarks, the transmission and four-wheel drive, ABS, and FYI, some details that make good sense. Notice the number in the upper right. That indicates the current chapter and is a handy way to search for the right topic. We've asked some Land Rover driving instructors to demonstrate the features and capabilities of Series 2. They spend a lot of time teaching owners all over North America how to get the most enjoyment out of their vehicles. And in their spare time, they're off-roading. So let's get going so you too can start your adventures. Whether you take a long trip or something a bit shorter, it's important to be comfortable. The front seats can be adjusted manually or electrically, depending upon your model. For manual adjustment, use the lever to move forward and back, and the knob to set the angle of the backrest. The knob above is for lumbar support. The eight-way power seats can be adjusted up to 45 seconds after the ignition is turned off the key removed and the door left open. Or if the door is closed, the ignition must be in position too. You can adjust the seat cushion, backrest and lumbar support with the power switches. To adjust the steering wheel, the vehicle should be stopped and in park. Push the lever up and hold. Move the wheel up or down and release the lever. To position the side view mirrors, turn the knob to left or right to select the mirror and then push it left, right, forward or back to adjust the mirror. The mirrors also have two positions which can be adjusted manually and are designed to fold in for car washes and narrow stretches off-road. The window switches are located on the center console with the controls for the front windows on the bottom row. Press and hold the bottom of the switch to lower and the top to raise. The front windows have a one touch down feature. Press firmly and release and the windows will fully open. To stop at any time, the windows can still be operated up to 45 seconds after the ignition is turned off as long as no door is opened. If your vehicle is equipped with factory fitted sunroofs, 
This 45-second delay works here as well. Controls for both sunroofs are between the visors. The front is on the left and the rear on the right. Press and release the upper part of the switch to open the sunroof to a tilt position. Press briefly for a second time to fully open the roof. The rear sunroof can also be operated using controls above the rear seat. Even though Discovery is equipped with dual front airbags, they are not a replacement for seat belts which should be worn at all times. To adjust the height of the seat belt, squeeze the control between finger and thumb to raise or lower. The belt should sit between your shoulder and neck. See your owner's manual for a complete description of proper fit. It's very important for all occupants to wear their safety belts properly. For additional security, the front belts are equipped with pretensioners. Please read the owner's manual for a complete discussion of these safety systems. There are other safety features engineered into Discovery. We'll take a look at them in the next chapter. Protecting small passengers is very important. There are child locks on the two rear doors to prevent opening from the inside and on the cargo door as well. To lock out operation of the back windows, press this switch on the centre console. And the sunroof operation can be conveniently locked out with this switch located with the master sunroof controls. All doors can be locked and unlocked with the central door lock switch. Your vehicle is equipped with the ALR or Auto Locking Retractor system. This deactivates the seatbelt inertia mechanism for proper installation of child seats. Here's how to use it. Remember to follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. It's especially important that children of all ages be properly buckled up and should ride in the rear seat whenever possible. Pull the belt out all the way to override the inertia mechanism. Feed it through, grab the buckle and insert the latch. Then let the belt retract until it locks. Airbags have been credited with saving many lives. However, it's important to remember that children in a rear-facing child safety seat must never be placed in the front seat where interaction with inflating airbags poses a significant risk. Also note the warnings posted on the top of the passenger sun visor. See your owner's manual for a detailed discussion of airbags and child seats. Along with airbags, Discovery is engineered to provide additional protection in case of accidents. The side doors have impact beams and are designed to stay latched in the event of a side impact. And in many kinds of accidents, an automatic fuel cutoff switch will turn off the electronic fuel pump. In an emergency, when the vehicle is stopped, use your warning lights. All direction indicator lights will flash, and they're designed to automatically engage in the event of an impact. Discovery has a sophisticated electronic security system. It's best to consult your owner's manual for a complete explanation. But here's a brief overview. You can lock and unlock the doors using the key or remote transmitter. But the system has been designed for use with the transmitter. That's why there's only one door lock, which is on the driver's door. In order to activate the alarm system, the hood and all doors must be closed. For maximum security, the windows and sunroof should also be closed. Press the lock button to lock the vehicle and set alarm sensors on the hood, doors and tailgate. The system is now armed and the engine is immobilized. If the hood or any doors are opened, the alarm will sound. To use the superlock feature to secure the vehicle, follow the same steps as before, but press the lock button twice. The indicator lights will flash three times to confirm that it is superlocked. This feature makes it impossible to manually unlock the doors from inside, even if someone breaks the glass. It's good practice to superlock your Series 2. To unlock the driver's door and disarm the system, press the Land Rover button once. Pressing it again will unlock all doors. The warning lights will flash once and the engine will be remobilized. And for convenience, the interior will be illuminated. One final note, interior lights will also stay on for 15 seconds upon leaving the vehicle.
Now let's review the instrument panel and steering column controls. There's a full complement of gauges including coolant temperature, tachometer, speedometer, odometer, trip odometer, reset button and the fuel gauge. When starting up, the warning lights go through a self-check routine but all should be out before the vehicle is driven off. The left stalk on the steering column controls the turn signals and the headlights. Rotate to the first position for parking lights, front and rear. Rotate to the second position for the headlights. Pull the stalk towards you for high and low beams. To adjust the level of illumination on the instrument panel, move the thumb wheel left or right to suit your preference. For night driving, you can use the auto dimming feature on the inside rear view mirror. Push the auto button to activate and the mirror automatically reduces glare from the following vehicles. The controls for the front wipers and washers are on the right stalk of the steering column. Pull down and release for one wipe. Turn the switch one click for intermittent wipe. To vary the delay, rotate this switch. Turn to the second position for normal speed wipe and to the third position for fast wipe. To wash the windshield, pull the stalk toward you. This also power washes the headlights when they're on low beam. The switches to the right of the instrument panel control the rear window system. The top one operates the washer and the next one the wiper. Now, if conditions are cold and wet, these switches will help. Press this one to activate the heating element if fitted for the windshield and this for the heating elements for the rear window. This will also heat the side view mirrors. For the optional electrically heated front seats, use these two buttons. This switch activates the front fog lights. They work only when the headlights are on low beam. For rear fog lights, use this switch just below. The Discovery Series 2 has a state-of-the-art electronic sound system featuring AM-FM stereo, weather band, audio cassette player, optional six-disc remote CD changer, and two optional headphone controls for rear passengers. It has tremendous capability, and here's an overview of the major controls. Read your owner's manual for complete details. Press to turn on the system and rotate to control the volume. Volume can also be controlled by these buttons on the steering wheel. Press the audio selection button to select bass, treble, balance and fade and fine tune by rotating the volume button. The FM band button switches between FM1 and FM2. The AM button selects AM1, AM2 and the weather band, which receives the nearest NOAA weather information. The six preset buttons will store 12 FM and 12 AM stations of your choice. Or if you press and hold the FM or AM button, AutoStore will assign the strongest signals on AM2 and FM2 presets. To tune manually on any band, press the manual button and tune up or down. To tune automatically, deselect manual for seek mode and tune up or down. To scan, press scan and the radio will stop at each station for 5 seconds. Here's a very convenient feature. Your Series 2 now has Radio Data System or RDS capability. Press the Information button which selects program type. 
This allows the radio to receive data from local stations identifying entertainment category and station call letters. Use the tuning buttons to select one of 22 categories. Press Information again and the system will automatically find a station broadcasting your preference. This new technology may not be available with all stations in an area. Refer to the owner's manual for complete details. With the radio on, insert a tape and the system will switch to tape mode. Use manual mode to fast forward and rewind. Press again to stop. In automatic mode, the search button will seek to the next track or return to the start of the current one. Scan plays the first 10 seconds of each track. This button will switch play to the other side. For Dolby B noise reduction, press this button. If you have a CD player, it's located under the front passenger seat and can hold six CDs. Insert the magazine with the arrow facing up. Turn on the radio, press the CD button. To play CDs 1 through 6, press the corresponding number. You can skip to the next track or back to the beginning of the current one. Or use manual mode to fast forward and back through a track. And press scan to listen to the first 10 seconds of each. By holding scan, it will randomly select tracks between all six discs. The functions can also be operated by the remote on the steering wheel. See the owner's manual for more information. Rear passengers can plug in headphones and enjoy entertainment separate from front passengers when the system is on. The subwoofer will be muted. There are two rear control units which can also have individual volume levels. They can change modes, search, skip, scan and control volume when the front unit is in a different mode. For example, when front passengers are listening to the radio, rear passengers use the CD or tape mode. Consult your owner's manual for full details. With a system this versatile, it would be a pity not to put it to good use. Next, the climate control system. To be truly capable of conquering all these climates, your discovery has been fitted with a sophisticated climate control system. While controls can be adjusted manually, allowing the system to function automatically is the simplest method of operation and is preferable in most operating conditions. Just press the auto button and air distribution and blower speeds are adjusted automatically to achieve and maintain desired temperatures. To manually adjust air distribution to the vents, press the distribution button. Driver and passenger can select individual temperature settings with their own controls. Adjust the fan speed with the blower button. To turn the air conditioning off, press the Econ button. You can press Econ again to turn the AC back on. When equipped, rear air conditioning can also be operated with controls in the rear ceiling. Either the front or rear switches will activate the rear system as long as the front air conditioning is on. For maximum cooling, set both temperature controls all the way to their lowest temperature. Low will appear in the display. Adjust the fan to high and push the air recirculation button. This prevents the system from taking in fresh air and recirculates and cools the interior air. In cold weather, use the heating system to defrost, demist and keep the interior comfortable. For maximum heat, turn both temperature controls all the way up. High will appear in the display. Adjust the fan to high and vents to face and feet level. To demist the windshield, Temperature should be at maximum settings. Be sure the air conditioning system is on to help dry incoming air. 
Adjust the vents to direct all air to the windshield. For defrosting, simply press the screen button. This will set temperatures and blower speed to maximum and distribute airflow to the windscreen only. It will also turn on the rear screen and, if fitted, the front screen heater. As soon as the windshield is clear, press the screen button again or auto to resume normal operation. The entire system can be turned off with this button. Just make sure to set the temperature to low beforehand to ensure fresh air flow into the cabin. Read your owner's manual for full details. By definition, one of the requirements of a sport utility vehicle is the ability to transport heavy loads. This expedition drove through Mongolia, where food, fuel and water were scarce and had to be transported along with clothing and camping gear. For everyday requirements, you can conceal your gear with a retractable cargo cover. If the load is going to be more substantial, remove the cargo cover and fold down either one or both of the rear seats. Lift the lever and fold the seat back forward. Now pull this control to release the seat base and fold the entire seat forward. With the rear seats down, you can carry more gear and secure it at these luggage anchor points. To open the optional third row seats in the rear of your Discovery, push the lever and hold to release the seat from its stowed position. Swing the seat and turn. Make sure the lower seat frame is fully extended before lowering onto the latch. Push down firmly to fully engage the floor latch. Pull up the backrest and unfold the head restraint from the roof. To stow the seat, push the head restraint back up to the roof. Release the backrest and fold down. Turn the twist grip fully forward to release the floor latch and lift the seat from the floor. Turn to vertical position and push firmly into the vehicle side ensuring that the latch is engaged. Be sure to read your owner's manual for important safety information regarding the use of these seats. Your Discovery provides security for off-road use with recovery hooks built right into the frame and is set up for towing with a Class 3 trailer hitch receiver with a plug for a wiring harness already installed. Consult your owner's manual for towing instructions. If equipped, the self-leveling suspension system will operate automatically on the rear of the vehicle to assist in maintaining a level or efficient height, regardless of vehicle load or when towing. You can operate the system manually from the instrument panel. Press this button to raise the rear of the vehicle for more clearance in specific off-road situations. Press it again to return to normal height. Read your owner's manual to fully understand the benefits of this system and when its use is appropriate. Thinking of doing some off-roading? Perhaps not something as rigorous as this, but rest assured, every Discovery Series 2 is designed to stand up to tough off-pavement conditions. That's why Land Rovers have been around for 50 years. That's what makes them legendary. Their superior components and engineering make Series 2 extremely capable. Here's a brief look at the design hallmarks. Start with a solid foundation. Land Rover engineers believe 4x4s need a rugged steel frame to withstand the punishment of vigorous off-roading. They specify a box section frame. The welded steel monocoque underbody is mounted to the chassis at 14 rubber body mounting points to insulate passengers from noise and vibration, providing a smooth passenger car-like ride. 
Another key ingredient for superior off-roading capability is the ability to clear many obstacles. Note the clean profile of Discovery's undercarriage. All components are tucked up inside the frame where they're safe and protected. The location of the two differentials is also noteworthy. On Discovery, they are lined up one behind the other, providing uniform clearances from front to back, and they are offset from the center, so that tall obstacles can be more easily passed under the driver's side of the vehicle. The suspension of your sport utility makes it extremely versatile. It not only provides smooth ride and class-leading handling, but can also support heavy loads. And most importantly for 4x4, it can get you through terrain that bears little resemblance to roads in your neighborhood. The suspension system allows very long wheel travel to help keep all four wheels on the ground for maximum traction. And finally, power is a very important factor. Discovery's V8 engine provides all that's needed for towing approved heavy loads and meeting off-road demands head-on. Of course, the four-wheel drive system has a lot to do with off-road prowess and we'll take a look at that in the next chapter. Many times, having the freedom to explore means having the right 4x4. The Mongolia expedition put the transmission and four-wheel drive system to good work. The operation isn't difficult, and there are a few design features we'd like to point out. First, the transmission. To shift out of park, the ignition key must be in position 2 and the brake pedal depressed. If these two conditions are not met, shift interlock will prevent movement of the shift lever. Here's a very handy feature. For quick bursts of power, there's no detent between drive and third, so you can manually shift back and forth between the two. All Series 2s have cruise control. Push the master switch and then operate the system with these switches on the steering column. This is the mode switch. When in high range, you can push it to activate sport mode for more rapid downshifts. An S will show on the display. In low range, you can activate manual mode, which simulates a manual transmission, keeping the vehicle in the gear you selected. The transfer gearbox allows shifting between a high and low range of gears. Use high range for all normal road driving and off-roading across dry level terrain. Use low range for heavy towing and in more extreme off-road conditions. To shift to low range, slow down to under 5 miles an hour or stop. Move the transmission lever to neutral, move the transfer gearbox lever from high to neutral and then neutral to low. Then shift into the desired forward or reverse gear. Knowing when and how to change gears should become familiar in time. Read your owner's manual for a complete explanation of these procedures. And soon you'll receive another video teaching operation of the transmission and four-wheel drive system and off-road driving technique in various types of terrain. Here's one last detail. The vehicle must be shifted into park and the transfer case in either high or low range before the key can be removed. This prevents accidentally leaving the vehicle in an unsafe condition. The purpose of anti-lock braking systems is to assist in braking without wheel lockup, thus helping to prevent skidding and assisting to allow the driver to maintain control of steering. The system works by monitoring the speed of each wheel. When braking occurs and wheel slippage is sensed, the system varies braking pressure to each wheel to help keep them from locking up. Discovery has a four-channel ABS system. The advantage of four-channel is that all four wheels can act independently. Under normal braking, where traction is good, ABS will not be activated. However, in emergency situations requiring hard braking and on loose and low traction surfaces, ABS will automatically operate. 
you'll hear a whirring sound and feel a pulsing and slight drop of the pedal pressure. This is normal and means that ABS is working. Now here's the key. In order for ABS to work properly, you must maintain strong, steady pressure on the brake pedal. Don't pump the brakes. This actually can lengthen the stopping distance. And don't forget to steer, even when braking. This method of braking is standard for any ABS equipped vehicle. When off-roading in loose surfaces, you may hear the system operating more frequently. Don't be alarmed. However, be aware that ABS will not overcome the laws of physics and extremely hazardous road surfaces. Take some time to become familiar with ABS. Read your owner's manual for a thorough explanation. Working in conjunction with ABS is Hill Descent Control, or HDC, to provide better off-road control, particularly when descending steep hills. To use the system, you must be in low range and traveling less than 31 miles per hour. Push the button on the panel, and the HDC light will illuminate to tell you the system is active. During descent, if the engine braking is insufficient to control the vehicle speed, HDC automatically applies the brakes to slow the vehicle. Be sure to read your owner's manual for full details of HDC. If your Discovery Series 2 is equipped with active cornering enhancement, this means it has an active suspension control system. The system features two lateral accelerometers that measure cornering forces, not body lean, thus making the system active rather than reactive. There are two cornering control modules, one on the front axle and another on the rear. Each module contains a hydraulic actuator. When either accelerometer detects a cornering force above a certain level, ACE applies hydraulic pressure to one of the actuators. The actuator then applies a countering force. The vehicle maintains a flatter, more comfortable stance through a corner. You may hear a slight whirring sound of the hydraulic pump when ACE is operating. Don't worry, this is normal and means ACE is operating. In the final chapter, we'll do a little housekeeping. Your Discovery Series 2 should receive routine services at your local dealer. In addition, each owner should make a number of simple checks regularly. These are covered in the owner's manual, but here's a quick overview of some important locations. There are two fuse boxes. One is located under the steering column, the other in the engine compartment. To open the hood, pull the release, lift the safety catch lever, raise the hood and support it with the prop rod. Remember, whenever working under the hood, be cautious of moving parts and beware if the engine is hot. The second fuse box is next to the engine coolant reservoir. Here's the engine oil filler cap, engine oil dipstick, brake fluid reservoir, ACE fluid reservoir, power steering fluid reservoir, washer fluid reservoir. And this is the air filter, conveniently located for periodic inspection in dusty off-road conditions. To release the fuel filler door, the ignition must be off. Press this button on the control panel. The jack is stowed here, in the engine compartment, while the jack handle, wheel chocks and tools are in the rear cargo door. And the spare tire is conveniently located on the cargo door. If you ever need roadside assistance, just call Land Rover's 24-hour hotline. We hope this video companion has been helpful, but always remember to read your owner's manual. You've not only bought a great vehicle, you bought a ticket to adventure. Ask your dealer about off-roading events. And be sure to inquire about Land Rover's off-road driving school at the Equinox Resort in Manchester, Vermont. Experienced instructors will teach you everything from the basics to advanced off-roading technique. There's a growing number of Land Rover centers with a dedicated staff specially trained to sell and service our four-wheel drive products. 
drop in to say hi and pick up gear designed for the Land Rover lifestyle. As an owner, you have the opportunity to join other enthusiasts for Land Rover adventures. Travel to some of the most fascinating regions of the world and learn advanced techniques from our own expert driving instructors. There are Land Rover clubs around North America staging local events. So remember, wherever you go, there are opportunities for Land Rover adventure. And now that you've seen how to operate many of these features, try them out. And don't forget, read your owner's manual.